Hey, I'm traveling this week visiting my teammates uh, work remotely for a company in Spain nowadays. And I wanted, there's something that we were talking today about how to prevent bugs, uh, how to prevent bugs in your software. Uh, this is a probably a very recurring uh, topic for companies, software companies out there. And it's a very important thing that you have to deal with. First of all, there's the realization that realistically you always will have bugs. And that's, that's just the reality of software products and it's the reality of any product. Any product will have also always some kind of defect. Um, that's just normal, it's what happens. And usually there's going to be like a ratio of bugs that you, whenever you are creating code out of, um, I don't know, it can be a ratio of number of lines introduced into the code base a percentage or one line out of whatever is going to contain a bug. It, that's a relatively common um, a ratio that different teams are going to have. Some teams are going to have it a little bit higher, sometimes some teams are going to have it a little bit lower. And that's just fine. Um, that's, well, it's the reality of, of software development. So there's no bug-free code, no bug-free product. That just doesn't exist. Um, that's just a reality that we had to deal with. But there are certain things that you can do to try to avoid bugs. So first of all, there's all the different type of test automation, uh, unit tests that you can add to your code to try to prevent bugs from happening. Um, whenever you introduce a new bug, whenever you introduce a fix, try to introduce a, a test for that bug so it doesn't reproduce or doesn't ha appear in the future. Because one of the probably most frustrating things of bugs is when something that used to work suddenly stops working. And that's pretty annoying for, for everybody. It's pretty annoying for the user, definitely. It's pretty annoying for the people testing in the company, the product. And of course, it's very time consuming and also annoying for the software engineering team. The other one is that you also should look into how can you create or define first what are the typical uses of your product that your customers have? And how can you recreate and automate those processes so they always produce some kind of output that you can compare with previous versions or previous iterations of, of the software and make sure that that output, that that workflow that your customers are following is never broken. This is very important because that's going to help you to make sure that those workflows that are the most typical and most critical for your customers never break. And this can be things like, well, the very, very basic ones like opening a project and performing some actions in the project, saving the project. If it's like uh, something like Premiere Pro to produce movies, rendering the movie, getting an output, and that the output of that movie is always consistent, that it doesn't change over time. So if you are able to reproduce it, if that workflow of editing, opening the project, editing, certain degree of editing, saving it, and then exporting it and producing a movie, if the movie is exactly the same file as you have been producing in previous versions, theoretically, at least nothing should have changed and nothing should have broken that typical workflow of your users. This is something very important, something that you relatively easily can do. Of course, it's going to require a effort from your development team. And it's going to also require effort from your product team, for your product specialist to define those workflows that your users are typically going to have. Then the next one that you can take a look is into how to monitor all these uh, different tests, how to create the dashboards that allow you to see when tests are passing, which type of tests, which ones are critical. Sometimes there's going to be critical ones that you all of them had to be passing. So something like a light, uh, traffic lights. And there's going to be some other tests that maybe are not that, that critical and maybe not all of them need to pass. Although I would argue that if you have tests that you can let them pass and they can be buggy, then I'm not completely sure why you're testing that. So it's important that you define and make sure that you understand what tests do you have and what level of or how they should be passing. Then you can also have things like tracking the actual performance of your product because some bugs might not introduce obvious problems in the output 
the output might be consistent, might be okay, but might be ruining the performance of the product. It might be that in the same example of producing the movie, when you're producing the movie, suddenly the time for rendering and exporting that, that movie, it goes from like one minute to 10 minutes. The output is still the same. The processing time has dropped dramatically. So that's something that you also want to monitor and understand how processing is working, how processing is maybe having an impact. So those are things that you also want to follow. Those are more technical tracking numbers or tracking metrics that you want to track and to make sure that they are not going off the charts. And another thing that you can do is have a clear definition of them that everybody always follows a certain process when they are producing code, that codes are reviewed, that codes are integrated, that codes are deployed to the correct instances and so on, and make sure that that process is followed. This is also going to help you to have a better quality code and potentially avoid some potential problems and maybe even bugs that you could be introducing and catch them maybe even before they go to the different uh, maybe production uh, instances that you have uh, up and running. These are just some simple tips that can help you improve the quality of your code that can help you preventing those annoyingly repeating bugs that can appear and break things that used to work, especially when something is breaking continuously. This can be very frustrating, especially for your customer. You don't want that to happen. You want to be able to catch these bugs, these problems before your customers find them and solve them so they, ever know, they never have to notice. If you have some tips about how to prevent bugs, about how to improve the quality of your code, please comment below and share it with the rest of us. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a like and subscribe to the channel. I will see you in the next one. And remember, stay safe.